break the field down into its components, you have the technical aspect, which is the actual surgery doing it. You have the immunological aspect, which is obviously the rejection of those tissues. You have the, the psychological and social aspects, which is, of course, the whole concept of having somebody else's face or somebody else's hand. And then you have the ethical issues, which is this whole thing of the risk versus the benefit. And really, the overlap is tremendous. It, 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 there's very much overlap. I'd say 80, 70, 80 percent of those issues overlap. It's enormous the amount of brain that is used in making the hand function. And, kind of in, interestingly, the face is right next to it. And so, um, and, and so psychologically, the whole thing of not having a hand, how does that affect somebody? Our patients that we transplanted hands onto, when we tell them three years later, what's the best thing about having a hand now? You would think that they would say, oh, because now I can tie my shoes, or now I can pick up... No. They say things like, now I can wear a wedding ring. I mean, a wedding ring, that doesn't... You know, now I can walk in the park with my daughter and hold her hands. If you think in transplantation, who are going to be our donors? The public. So if the public doesn't know anything about face transplantation and then suddenly one of your loved one dies and I come to you and I say, could you donate your face? You'd be horrified. You'd never heard about this before. But the media makes the public aware of it and so that when we go, and if the media does a good job, because you also have the tabloid type of media that just does a dis disaster terms of publishing things that just aren't true, but when you have good media presenting what is happening, it helps us, because then people, when you go to them and you talk to them about this, they go, oh yeah, I heard about that, that's great.